Hi everyone, so we're going to get started on acids and bases um, in this next unit. I'm going to break this up into two videos, but it's going to be on one PowerPoint. So this first um, kind of video, I'm just going to go through the basics of what acids and bases are and also what the pH scale is. And then the second video, I'll talk about um, indicators that you can use to identify these acids and bases. So, um, some characteristics of acids. They have a sour taste, so that's where if you're eating a lemon or an orange, um, that's that sour taste you can get um, is due to the citric acid in those fruits. When they're in an aqueous solution, they are electrolytes, meaning that their ions that they make can conduct electric currents. When they react with certain metals, they can produce hydrogen gas. So there are metals, there's a table J, in your reference table. And the metals that are listed above H2, when they react with acids, they um, will make hydrogen gas, which is H2. Um, we'll get a little bit more in depth with this when we do our electrochemistry unit, but I thought it was a good note to add. There are two definitions of an acid. There's a rainous acid, and that is in a water solution, um, acids give off hydrogen ions, H+. Okay, So I'll give you the example of hydrochloric acid. When it's in an aqueous solution, it makes H+, and Cl-. Our second definition is the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid, and it says that an acid is any substance that donates a hydrogen ion, so also H+. Um, so you're wondering what's the difference between these two definitions. These are very similar. It just expands um, on the fact that it doesn't necessarily need to make a hydrogen ion um, in an Arrhenius acid. The Bronsted-Lowry expands it so that it just has to donate a hydrogen ion. So we don't need to see the hydrogen ion alone in order for it to be an acid. As you can see in asterisk, um, we will be using the Bronsted-Lowry acid for the most part in this class because it makes it easiest to identify acids for us. And then you'll notice table K um, is also in your reference table, and that is some common acid names. You have hydrochloric acid, you have nitrous acid, nitric acid, and so forth. Okay, So that's a good place to go when identifying acids. Then we have some properties of bases. So these have a bitter taste. They're slippery and soapy. Um, so for some examples, they could, you could look at bleach or soap um, to keep in mind for bases. Also, when they are in aqueous solutions, they can conduct um, electricity. So they are also known as electrolytes. Um, again, with our two definitions, an Arrhenius base in a water solution produces a hydroxide ion. So I have that example, sodium hydroxide, um, in an aqueous solution, making sodium and hydroxide. Our Bronsted-Lowry base definition kind of expands this, um, and it says any substance that accepts a hydrogen ion. So again, we're going to use this blue definition here, the Bronsted-Lowry base definition, because it expands a little bit. We don't necessarily need that OH hydroxide ion in order for it to be a base. Now you'll notice if we go to table L, from our reference table. Most of our bases do have that OH, so we have sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and calcium hydroxide. However, <clears throat> um, we have ammonia, and that is a base, but it does not have an OH ion with it. So by using this Bronsted-Lowry base definition, it kind of expands upon what can go under our umbrella of a base. All right, here I have an example of foria of an acid being added to a base and what their products make. So throughout this PowerPoint, I'm going to use red for acids and blue for bases. Um, it's just something that my teachers did in high school and in college, and so those colors kind of stuck for me. Um, if those don't work for you, then pick your own colors um, to kind of associate with these because it makes looking at these kind of reactions a lot easier. So if you look at HNO3, um, what we want to do to identify it as an acid or base is to look for something similar <clears throat> in the product side. So we have a N, a nitrogen, in our HNO3 that is kind of different and makes it stand out. So let's look for, on the product side, our N, which is going to be over here, NO3. So if we look, as we go from HNO3 to NO3-, minus, what are we losing? An H, a hydrogen ion. 
So that's going to make it an acid because as we saw in our definition of acids, we want a substance that donates a hydrogen ion. So that HNO3 is going to be our acid. Then if we look at our water, H2O, um, as we go from H2O over here to H3O plus in the product side, you notice that our water gained a hydrogen ion. It went from having two to having three. So that is going to be using our definition of Bronsted-Lowry base. Um, sorry, that should say base. Um, <clears throat> we know this is a base because it's accepting the hydrogen ion. So we're using this Bronsted-Lowry base definition, and it accepts a hydrogen ion. So that's how we're going to know that that water is being a, high, um, a base in this situation. Okay. Water is ampho amphiproduct. And that means that it can act as either an acid or a base. Um, so when it's in the presence of a strong acid, it's going to act as a base. When it's in the presence of a strong base, it's going to act as an acid. I'm sorry, I did that backwards. Um, but over here in the red, if we look at the water, as we're going from H2 over here to our OH over there, we are losing a hydrogen ion, which means it's going to be an acid. Versus down here in the blue, if we look at our water, as we go from the left to the right, the water is gaining a hydrogen, so it's going to be acting like a base in this case. Okay, strengths of acids and bases. So, we know that um, in the lab, I told you, you cannot um, drink or ingest um, hydrochloric acid, HCl. Um, and I warned you of how dangerous it can be. However, you eat many fruits and drink a lot of juices that have citric acid in them. So how does that work? They're both acids. So what happens is the strength of an acid or a base depends on how well it ionizes. So when 100 um, hydrochloric acid molecules dissolve in water, all 100 molecules ionize and form the ions. So it completely ionizes, making it a strong acid. Versus our weaker acids, like citric acid, when they are dissolved in water, not all of their molecules break apart and form ions, which make it weaker. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is the pH scale, um, which some of you are familiar with. So this expresses, it's the power of hydrogen. So it <clears throat> expresses the concentration of hydrogen ions from 0 to 14. So the lowest we can have is 0, the highest we can have is 14. A pH of 0 tells us a strong acid, a pH of 7 tells us neutral, and a pH of 14 tells us we have a very strong base. The pH scale is logarithmic, which means that if I have a pH of 5 and a pH of 6, that's not a difference of 1, it's actually a difference of 10 times greater because of that log logarithmic <laughs> scale. Um, so it's a tenfold change when we have differences in our pHs, um, or a hundredfold or a thousandfold, depending on what your difference is between pHs. So keep that in mind. That's a huge difference. <clears throat> the pH scale you'll notice on the next slide. Um, sometimes instead of using the term basic, we use the term alkaline. So you'll see that kind of interchangeably. And then also in the next um, slide, you may want to use that for some of your ideas for your acids and bases project that you're going to do. Alright, so here's an example of a pH scale that has some nice um, examples that you should be or probably are familiar with. Um, so again, we have acidic over here. And then we have our basic or alkaline over here, and then our neutral is going to be in the middle. So when something is more acidic, it actually has a lower pH. When something is more basic, it actually has a very high pH. So that's a little bit confusing because for acidic, the lower the pH, the stronger it is um, and the more acidic it is. Um, and then our basic one does follow our typical numerical rules that we would think of, a higher number being higher. Um, so, we have an example of a battery being a, on the pH scale of 0. We have stomach acid at 1, lemon juice at 2, we have vinegar at 3, oops, <clears throat> tomato at 4, coffee at 5, milk at 6, water is our neutral example at 7, then we have blood, which is slightly basic at 8. 
baking soda at nine. So when your stomach is upset, you take those um, Pepto-Bismol tablets. So that's under 10. Those are basic. And that is because your stomach acid is so acidic, that is to kind of, oh, shoot. That is to neutralize the um, acid in your stomach. Then you have ammonia solution at 11, um, soap at 12, so soap is pretty basic, bleach at 13, and then drain cleaner, um, which is even stronger than bleach at our most basic um, pH of 14, okay? A nice way to remember these for the pH scale is you have to remember that it's 0 to 14, um, but to remember which side is the acid and which side is a base, it goes in numerical order as well as alphabetical order. So A, acidic, comes before B, basic. And I know it says alkaline, alkaline but it also is for basic solution. So it goes from A to B for our scale because you're going to have to remember this pH scale on your own. Um, this is not in the reference table. You don't need to remember these examples, but I thought this was a good kind of visual for you and also um, a um, starting point for your uh, acid and basic project that I'm going to give you um, to complete for this unit as well. Um, I think, oh, and then the last thing that we'll talk about in this video is reactions between acids and bases. So there's a, something called a neutralization reaction. So specifically looking at Arrhenius acids and bases so that we have that OH present in our base. Um, when these are combined, Together, they form a salt and water. Um, so if we have our example of uh, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, these make sodium, sodium chloride and water. Um, and then to get to that neutralization, we do something called a titration. Um, so this is, um, and if you take AP Chem, you'll be doing one of these, um, or if you advance in your science career in college, um, a titration takes when we have an unknown amount or concentration, sorry, of an acid or base, we take a known concentration of an acid or base and add them together. Um, and that is, we know what our um, concentration when we hit this neutralization point. So when we have a neutral pH. Um, there's a lot of math that goes into this, but we will not get into the nitty gritty of that quite yet. Um, if and when we go back to school, I'll kind of go back to this unit and explain the math behind this. But for now, I just wanted to get the concepts down. Um, so this is the first video, and then I will make another video showing you how to use table M for indicators in your reference table.